Welcome back to Console Cowboys. At the end of the last video, I gave you a bit of homework. And I know you're not looking ahead to cheat. So hopefully you reversed the rest of the car, figured out how the lock and unlock functionality worked on your own. If it was really easy for you and you want a bit of a challenge, check out the simulator's help functions. You can make it harder, you can randomize the IDs, and then you can do it all over again for a bit more practice. I'll leave that for you to explore. Now that we know what's running on our network, and how each of the pieces work, it's time for us to abandon the GUI controls and directly send our commands to the car. Why would we want to do this? Well, as of right now, all we've done essentially is sniff a network while working with the normal controls. What we really want is the ability to send our commands directly to the car when we are remote to the vehicle. How we get remote access can be achieved in many ways. As simple as installing your own adapter with remote Bluetooth or cellular connections, or as complicated as a remote exploitation of some vulnerability in many of the car's components using some type of wireless technology. Ideally, you would want to do this programmatically, but for now, let's take a look at CanSend with a few bash tricks to get things done. CanSend is also part of the CAN utilities package we used earlier. We can use it to send data over the network. In this case, let's send ID 188. If you remember correctly from your reversing, ID 188 was the blinker. So what we need to do is we need to send the 01 bit for the left blinker and separate that with a pound sign. You'll notice you saw a blink. If we do it again, the blinker went again. So let's try sending the ID 244, which if you remember was the speed, and we'll send it the value of 11, which equals 30 miles per hour. If we do that, then we should get 30 miles per hour on the interface. I didn't see anything, let's try again. Okay, so you'll notice that the needle is idling there, which means data is probably being sent to it over and over. Let's try adding a while loop to our request and say, while true, keep sending this value over and over again and tell the interface that it's actually 30 miles per hour. Now you'll notice the interface there on the simulator is bouncing between 30 and 1. What it's doing is it's fighting between the value we're sending it and the value it's actually getting from the network. An alternative method would be to grep the network's output looking for ID 244 and replacing the values. So if we take the can dump output and then we send that through a grep looking for 244, we can then read the lines and then send off a new value of 30 miles per hour instead of the idle value of zero. When we do this, effectively, we're just saying, hey, every time you see the original message, let's replace it with 30 miles per hour. And as you see, there's a similar effect. This would be useful in a situation where you wanted to monitor the network and apply changes when you see things happening. For example, maybe somebody stole your car and you have a cellular adapter hooked in there and every time they try to unlock the doors, you're just going to effectively lock it on them until you track the car and show up with the police. Although a pretty contrived scenario, you see my point. In part one of this series, you've learned how CAN networks work, you've learned how to sniff those networks, you've learned how to reverse the functionality within those networks, and then send your own values to manipulate the functionality in those networks. In part two, we're going to take a look at similar things, but we're going to program our own tools to do it because effectively, if you can program your own tools, you can do a lot more than using the tools that are available. Hopefully you learned something useful or you had some fun. If so, hit the like button. If you want to be notified when new videos arrive, hit the subscribe button and thank you for watching.